Hey everybody, Miss Tracy here. Today we're going to read Midas Mouse. And what's really cool is that the art in this book isn't drawn with pencils or crayons. They are photographs. Photographs by David Elwant. Here we go. I will dedicate this book to my poor mouse, Tigers, who just passed away. He looked just like the mouse in the pictures. Here we go. Midas Mouse lived in the dark. By day, he curled up with his brothers and sisters in the mouse hole behind the kitchen wall. At night, he scampered through the dark kitchen, feasting on tasty crumbs and cookies and cheese. Daylight is dangerous for mice, his mother warned her children. But Midas had seen the sunbeams lighting up the room beyond the baseboard, and he longed to play in them. One day, as he watched the dust dance in the sunlight through a crack in the floorboards, Midas forgot his mother's warning. He slipped out of the mouse hole and into the light. The sun was warm and dazzling. It sparkled on his fur like gold dust. It lay on the floor in golden puddles. Midas closed his eyes to the glare and danced till he was dizzy. Oh, he sighed, spinning in a sunbeam. I wish I were like the sun. I wish everything I touch would turn to gold. For a moment, his fur felt as warm as if the sun itself had touched him with one golden finger. Then he scurried back to the mouse hole, his feet filled with a strange tingling. Come out and play in the sun, he called to his brother, Freddy. But Freddy would not budge from the mouse hole. You have changed, Midas, he squeaked. Whatever have you done? I have been touched by the sun, said Midas. And sure enough, as he ran back across the floorboards, he knew that his wish had been granted. Everything he touched with his four pink paws suddenly turned to hard, shiny gold. He ran over the books on the dusky desk until their covers sparkled and their pages shimmered. He danced onto the hall clock and turned its key to shiny gold. He scampered through the kitchen, turning crumbs to gold dust. And then he ran up and down the strings of an old violin. I can make music, he cried. But as his feet touched them, the golden strings grew silent. It doesn't take music, though, to wake a cat. But Midas was not afraid. Up the cat's legs he ran, then down its black back, until soon the cat was no more than a shiny statue, crouching silently in the sunlight. Now Midas could run anywhere he pleased. Up and down, all over the house, he turned everything into gold. Dishes and doormats, cups and cushions, even the cheese. Midas's mother slipped out of the mouse hole and blinked in the glare of the golden room. Look, mother, sang Midas, I am like the sun. I have turned everything to gold. But his mother only shook her head sadly. Oh, Midas, she said, what shall we do now? For we cannot eat golden cheese or golden breadcrumbs. We will surely starve. Midas nibbled at a crumb. It was as hard as a pebble. What have I done, he thought, as the sun set outside the windows and long shadows crept across the floor. Midas shivered. How he wished that everything could be as it was before. And as he wished, with all his tiny beating heart, the pale moon rose in the dark sky. It cast its magical light through the windows, transforming everything in its silvery glow. The room was no longer made of gold, and when the moonbeams fell on Midas, he became just an ordinary mouse again. The cat stretched and yawned. Midas scurried to the safety of the mouse hole. Then, while the other mice feasted on tasty tidbits and played in the dark, Midas curled up and slept, chasing moonbeams in his dreams through the long, cozy night. The End